Hayden and Kiki's story started in the summer of 2013, and it's a good one, so buckle up. Kiki, with some friends, traveled for the weekend to the Lake of the Ozarks for the first time ever in her life. It just so happens that at the lake house next door were some boys. And one of those boys was a boy named Hayden Stancer. Kiki's friends went over to the boys' house that night and they all hung out. But Hayden never spoke to Kiki that night and Kiki noticed. <laughs> the next night there was a Tim McGraw concert and Hayden was there. I think he had a barbecue stain on his white t-shirt. <laughs> and Kiki was there with her suntan lines and red lipstick. <laughs> and she sees Hayden. She walks up to him and says in a way that only Kiki could, why didn't you talk to me last night? <laughs> Hayden was a little taken back by the question, but. A, I guess he liked it because they spent the next hour getting to know each other, flirting with each other, and let's just say that the sparks were flying. But then the weekend ended and everybody went home, not knowing if they would ever see each other again. But Hayden could not get Kiki off of his mind. Let's just say that a heart don't forget, something like that. Me and my buddy show up at the Tim McGraw concert, and these two girls uh, walk up to us, and Kiki walks up to me and in front of all the boys and says, hey, why didn't you talk to me last night? <laughs> she had my attention immediately. After we left that night, our relationship started to grow and a few sparks started to fly. I went to visit you for the first time in Oklahoma and after leaving the next day I told my friends I'm going to marry that girl. Not knowing God was smiling down in pleasure agreements with me. I met this boy at the lake in 2013 and not that same person but yet a completely different man. He's standing before me today, seven years later, becoming my husband. How can I look at you and not see the Lord's hand completely on my story? You get hard to be crying. <laughs> okay, hurry, you gotta blow in my eyes. Blow in my eyes. Blow in them. <laughs> then in 2018, almost five years after they had met, they got things going again. She followed me on Instagram and I didn't follow her back. Yeah, so I followed him and then he didn't follow me back. <laughs> and I texted him and it was like low, I said like low blow. We hadn't talked in like three years. I was like, I was like low blow. Two days later I get a text and this is just who she is, but she was like, that was rude. After not talking for five years, I'm like, the audacity, you know, again, the audacity. <laughs> Pursue ladies, pursue the men. <laughs> uh, like you didn't talk, why didn't you talk to me last night? That was rude, and so those were both just like two huge moments that I was like, dude, like I love this girl. So we started going on dates, and uh, out here. After our second date, two years ago, I called my mom. I told her I was going to marry you. Mm -hmm. I knew it. It was you. It's always been you. <laughs> it was inevitable. We all knew it, anyone that knows them. If you've ever been around these guys, you just know. They are meant for each other. been blessed to watch you, this baby girl I held as an infant, blossom into the beautiful, confident woman you are today, now beginning this next chapter of your life as a wife with a husband I hoped you'd always meet. Despite my matchmaking skills, this union was brought together in accordance with God's timing. By themselves, they're engaging. God-fearing, incredible people, but put them together, 
their best traits are magnified. The choices that you made. Peyton, you and I were able to spend some time together while you and Kick quarantined at the ranch with us and get to know each other. I'd expect that spending two months under the same roof with your soon-to-be in-laws could be trying for a young man. But you rose to the challenge and met it with flying colors. I observed an intense focus as you laid the foundation for launching your new venture. And I witnessed your commitment to making sure that my daughter knew that she was loved. I also learned we're gonna to need to work on your fishing skills. <laughs> something her maid of honor speech at my wedding talking about the true strength of a man depends on the smile of the woman next to him and I can say it's true here because I have never seen my sister smile bigger and she's the happiest person I know and I've never seen her smile bigger than she does when she's with you you all the love in the world. Kiki, thank you for being my best friend. And Hayden, thank you for loving Kiki the way she's always deserved. walk alongside of you, help pick up your burdens, and help carry them to the cross. I promise to fall in love with Jesus a little more each day so that I can love you to the fullest. I promise to always be faithful and to choose you daily. I promise to always be your biggest cheerleader and to always believe in you. I promise to have a heart that is ready to ask for forgiveness and is ready to forgive. I promise to pursue you and be intentional with your heart so that you feel like the most cherished, loved, and important girl on the planet. I promise to always follow you because I know you are following the Lord. I love you with my entire heart and stance here. I choose you today and I'll choose you tomorrow. And I'll go on choosing you day after day for the rest of my life. When I want to be reminded of God's love and faithfulness, I get to look to Jesus and then I get to look to you. The grass doesn't get any greener with you. And you have my eyes and attention until my last breath. I love you with my entire heart, Mackenzie Taylor Allen, and it's yours forever. To Mr. and Mrs. Hayden Stancer.